All right, KMS wrap up show. Am I recording? I am. Chris, you stayed with me here. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You must not think I'm a cunt if you're staying back after the show. No, I don't. I don't. I no, I don't. I said I may have said it, you know, like in passing. I could say on the on the show, but not really. I, I've never really been that mad at you. That was that was a strange impulse by Carano, wasn't it? Hey, in fairness like, to Carano, yeah. like I don't think he expected me to go there. I think he was just. Yeah, I think you were in the line of sight for him. Yes. And it was just like, all right, I'll, you know, I think he was. I no, think, yeah, I don't. I, I think, I, and I was just, I was having fun. Yeah, you were having a good time yeah. either way. So I certainly was. All right. Today's show, uh, we obviously, we did a little bit of the recap of the incident that you had at Saco, though. So is there any more, people have listened to the show by now or watched it. Is there any more context you can add to the fight that potentially happened after the show with the guy there was who not, the Like I said, no one stood up. No yeah. one pushed each other. It was, uh, and the guy, and uh, he did send me a very nice message. Uh, yeah. He, you know, the morning after, and then even yesterday, he, he, you know, it was just no bad boy. Yes. And if I saw him at the next live show, I would be happy to see him. I'd shake his hand. And, you know, he, he's a good guy. He, if look, if you're watching this and you've never gotten drunk and done something stupid or just kind of, or even just kind of acting like an asshole, then yep. get more power to you. I know I have uh, more than once. So I asked you before the show, I also, Harrison's sitting next to us over here. I asked both of you guys, did I have a bad read on that situation? Because he rushed the stage. It's a weird move, but also like, the feeling at those events at Saco, even though there are, you know, what, a thousand plus people at that event, it felt like it doesn't feel like a weird th move for like a fan to come up and talk to us in any way or even like jump on the stage and talk to us. Did I read that? Like I asked you, did I read the situation wrong? And you said yes. Like I didn't think he I don't was... know if you read it wrong, but you definitely got aggressive at one point. Uh, not aggr like aggressive aggressive, but the tone changed at one point. I got aggressive? Yeah, you okay. started to get like more serious. Like, well, yeah, because he like wasn't really having fun with it. I think to your point, he had this like dry sense of humor to his communication. And I was kind of like, all right, this now, now this is going on and it's a weird way. It wasn't like I thought he was... I wasn't going to like throw him off the stage or anything right. like that. But I, I don't know. I just thought he was just kind of like fucking around. It wasn't funny. And so that's why he should have known to leave. But I don't know. You, It seemed like you guys thought it was more of a serious thing. Yeah, well, that was kind of a microcosm of my Saturday night. Okay. Was All that right. just, just what multiplied? Harrison, what did you say? What did you say? Did you say that it was like an aggressive move by him? You thought like we should have escorted him off the stage well, or something? I, I don't know. Oh, you wanted to do something, Oh, too. wow. Yeah, so I, about? That's basically what I'm asking and what I asked you before the show. It's like, was I a pussy for not standing up and throwing him off the stage? That's no, kind of that would I'm have asking. been bad. No, you don't want to. No, I almost think you were almost the other way. I like guess it should have been more playful and fun. Yeah, that's but that's easier to, to say in retrospect, maybe. Yeah. Like when you're in the moment, you're like, uh, who's this guy? What's happening? Yes. Um, yes. But no, I, no I, I would say if anything, just lean more toward being playful with it, I would think. But yeah. uh, but no, no. And I said, the guy's a good guy. But, you know, if, if we, you see him at a live show, say hi. He's definitely. Nice definitely. Uh, so what was your overall? But we didn't really ask you. What was your overall impressions of the Sako show just in general? Just the event and atmosphere and, you know, what went on? Yeah, I mean, I, I love I love Manners. I'm a Manners guy. But yep. Manners is way off base with the length of the show, uh, like, complaining. Like, because yep. what the whole thing is, it is really an experience. And it's an all-day experience. Like, everyone gets there early. No one gets there right when the show begins or even close. Everyone yep. gets there Christ, between three and five, yep. everyone. So we're all there for a large chunk of the day. Kirk isn't like, he isn't just doing the show. Like he is really walking around saying hi to everyone, you know, and then you're just, you know, you're saying hi to, you're saying hi. If you've been to a few of these, you're saying hi to friends you, you've made. Like, it's a very, it's a long day. It's a great day, but it's a yep. long day. Yep. Um, I know like, for instance, like when we did soccer one and two last year, they were back to back. And by Sako 2, like, everyone was fucking exhausted. Like, yep. we were all tired because it was a long day. And those shows were on Sako 1 and 2 weren't terribly long. Like, I, I do think you maybe didn't handle the video thing the best. Yep. Um, I think playing some videos up top, like like Menders that others have suggested would have been smarter, and then trying to warm their way in, you know, weave them in in a better way. Yep. But, you know, even then, we're talking about, you know, adding, what, maybe 15 minutes to the show? You know what um, I mean? Oh, to the t if we played the video. Yeah, because yeah, like, each video was four minutes. I just, I went in what I felt like was the vibe of where the conversation was going. So, like, let's just for argument's sake say, you know, they started talking about Ziggy randomly. Like, I would have played the Ziggy rundown. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I think you need to have it. Yeah, I disagree with that, I guess. Because, yeah. like, how often is Ziggy going to come up? I guess so. I think you almost need to have, like, all right, roughly at this time, I'm going to put this in. Roughly at this time. I think that's how I would do it. I'm not a producer either. Well, so I was I know. No, but also, like, the other. And just adding to that, yes, I don't think Ziggy's name would have come up. But if Kirk called for another video, just that, and we didn't have kind of like a, a content tie in in that yeah. moment, I would have went to one of those. It was just, and I, they can say they don't believe me, but, like, we were talking about you being there. We were talking about the trivia 
contest right. or whatever, it made sense to then just drop out. Well, Chris did a video and then Kirk yeah. calls for it kind of, or, you know, whatever else we ended up playing in that moment, we were talking about Justin. Oh, Justin did, did a video, you know? So it just kind of, it wasn't as, mo- and I don't think he, Menders was saying it was malicious in any way like that, but I, I totally agree. Like if I could predict the situation better, I think probably the Warden video, which was amazing. Yes. Warden. Leading into beta, leading into uh, big cat would have probably been like a good, you know what I mean? Start to yeah, the show, a good could, start right? Show. Something like that could happen, yeah. right? Yeah, I did think it's just a better way, maybe a stitch. But uh, but the length of the show though, like I've never gone to like a soccer show or any of Madawaska show, or whatever. Any shows I've been doing, been like, oh man, I got cheated. That was too short. Yeah, because you're just there now. I imagine I've listened to some, like I didn't go to the VFW shows and I didn't go to the first Madawaska. Yep, and listening to it, it's just not anywhere near the same like it's it just it isn't it's just a different and like it, as great of a time as you're having when you're there it's not the same thing as you're listening to yep. it especially a live event yep so it, i can see how if you just listen to it you're like oh this isn't what do people, you know people are raving about it what are they talking about but you, it, it sucks but you, you had to be there yep i totally agree so all right well today's show we actually I'll, I'll get your take on the guest we were talking about the incident that happened with her name was uh eden torres i believe mm-hmm. with her name she she went viral on tiktok after this video uh, basically, she kind of claims that she was um, not berated, but she was disrespected at the at a Saco, and she kind of at a Sonic at a Sonic. I'm sorry, I keep thinking Saco in my brain right now, but at a Sonic, and we just wanted to get her take on the video that went viral. What was your take on the interview? I thought it was a good collaborative conversation. I just think those things are tough. Like everybody says they want to have a conversation, that's what needs to happen, and I just felt like she was. She definitely wasn't listening, but I can understand the fight that she wanted to have or the fight that she feels like she needs to have to for the betterment of, you know, her community, her community and the issue, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, yeah. a, a, a so one thing I will say, whenever you call into this show, there always is a little bit of a delay. Yep. So it's really hard to have that kind of background. I know when I've called in as Johnny Carson, the first couple of times I called, I was really I didn't expect a delay. So I was like, I, I didn't want to interrupt. And, he you know, it's just hard to get that timing just right. Yep. Timing is so important to conversation. So that 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 can throw people off too and then also she's probably not a professional i don't think this is what she does is you know goes on shows and you know is this like advocate I, I, maybe i'm wrong i don't think she goes on shows but i think she's very well spoken and prepared yeah. to have that type of conversation and wants to have as many of those conversations as possible i agree with yeah. that yeah. but yep. she probably has her talking points she kind of sticks to where kirk is such a great converse you know the best conversationalist i've ever met yep so you know, she might not be, you know, think about how many, you know, God, if, if she does like 20 shows, how many of these like are just like empty head anchor people? Oh, yeah. Who are sure. just like, and it's just like, all right, you, you kind of have to have your talking points because they're not going to, they're not going to get to the point you want to get to or they're not going to make where Kirk will actually have the conversation with you. So in fairness to her, she probably doesn't know anything about what she's walking into and doesn't know how it can be more of a, a talk. Correct. Yeah. Um, well, she, she basically so. called him like misogynistic because he said she was aggressive in the video. And yeah. that's where, that's where I kind of feel like sometimes those conversations get a little too like one sided. Like she, she expects to hear like, an NPR reporter agreeing with her all the time. Or, like, or Tucker Jr. No, yeah, exactly. It's you, one or the other. One or the other, right. you're right. And at the end of the day, like, he was just pointing out what is, in my opinion, like, kind of obvious. Like, whether you whether you, you agree with how we view it, you were acting aggressive. You just were doing it in more of an empowering view versus, like, maybe someone who would think that aggression is kind of an asshole move, you know? Yeah, like, no, I, I think that's why having... So the first time she comes on, she's obviously going to be defensive because she just doesn't know what she's walking into. It doesn't yep. and probably... And, Probably and also the stuff she mentioned. I'm sure she has been harassed. I'm sure she has had a tough time because of being transgender. So maybe she's defensive anyway. But maybe it's the thing where if we had her on a couple times, and then you know we, if we have a transgender issue come up, we could bring her on. And then yep. she's like, oh no, this is a, a a place to go. We have that talk. Maybe she would dial back some of those kind of monologues she was doing. Yeah, I will say this. Like I. It, just the fact that she feels like in her daily life, she feels so threatened, whether you believe it or not, right. I, it's up to you after you hear the conversation, but to think that you feel so threatened that you're taking out your camera because you want that to be proof. If something happens like fuck, like just fuck. Like I, I have a lot of sympathy, a lot of empathy for anybody who's going through anything where they feel like they have to turn on their camera so it can be proof because they're scared just to like walk down the street for Christ's fucking sake. I know. Yeah. Awesome. I still, I get my whole thing. My whole thing was the transgender. Just, just be nice to people. People yeah. want to be called. Just call them. Way, I, that's, I, what, I, uh, yeah. that's what I think just, Chappelle was doing by the way. Yeah. A lot of his stand up was like, I don't, you know, it's not trying to, I know he's, he's a, co- he's a comic, right? So he's making fun of different right. aspects of people's lives and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, he ended it by just telling a story about a trans friend of his. Right. And saying like, oh, 
you're a person, you go through this, I'm judging you as a person because we're both fucking people. Be good to people is, I thought, his message in that. And so that's what gets lost in the shuffle to me. That's a shame. But he's smart enough to know that, you know, these, you know, the liberal media on, yep. on, that, on that lens is going to then just take the, the most controversial quotes and run with that. Absolutely. And then people who don't like him anyway, like Kirk said, people are just going to walk in and not like him. They're going to pull those quotes. So, I mean, but he's savvy enough to know that. He just doesn't give a shit, which, hey, yep. good for him. If he doesn't care, he doesn't care, you know? Absolutely. So we'll round it up. We have to go all through the topics because we've been long here and uh, it's the weekend. So, but I want to get your take because I feel like you're into this stuff like, like I am. I feel like you're right. There's going to be a little bit of a shakeup in the sports radio scene because of this Mike Thomas hire. I can't wait to watch if he can poach some fucking talent over to EEI. Now, granted, I don't think anything's saving EEI, but I'll just be interested to see, like, why'd they hire him? And if it is to poach talent, like, is he going to be able to pull it off? No, me and you love this shit. Yes. Like, this is like all, wherever, before I show, me and Dave are always talking. We just, have nowhere to read, we just have nowhere to read about it because our sports media columnist doesn't write about sports yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, or what sports media columnist. Uh, right, so, yeah, Dave and I eat this stuff up. We, we love it. But, no, I'm super, I, I saw it. I, I saw the press release. I was like, holy shit, like, they're bringing this guy back. And I totally think he's going to poach talent. I think that's the reason they brought him in there. Yep. I am also, like, I think Kirk's absolutely right. Blow it up. Get rid of everybody because... Like I said, the ratings aren't going to get any worse because some people just have EI preset anyway. Yep. So you're not going to do any worse you now. And like you say, it'd be cheaper. So blow it up. Just bring in a bunch of new people. If one or two of those 10 are okay or good, and you can tie them with poaching, let's say they get Fred Touch, let's say they get Michael, let's say they pay those guys a, you know, a, a crazy ransom to get them. Yep. Now you have three or four decent people. Now you can actually build something. Plus you've taken away from the, the enemy. Uh, that's the, I think the only way to do it, but you have to actually be willing to like any sports team rebuild. You have to Correct. rip everything down, you know, rip the walls down, rip everything down and then get in new people. But they don't, this doesn't seem to be, I don't know. Do you notice this? this doesn't seem to be a big attitude in Boston media to try new people out at all. It's been the way it's been the case for fucking years. There's no grooming of anybody no. and, and they have all the resources to do it. Right. You walk into intercom or Jesus Christ, Odyssey or whatever. Right. There's 27 fucking studios that aren't in use. There's interns just grabbing audio in that space. You should be grooming new talents by trying podcasts and seeing if they explode and, and doing a podcast so that the next Kirk Minahan or the, or Greg Hill in the morning makes fun of that fucking podcast. So then that, person hopefully becomes more of a known name and grows into something else that's why i say like nothing i don't give a fuck to be honest if you poach mike felger like maybe i'm a weird brain and and i think of things differently i don't think it fucking matters i think wei is so fucked that they could get the number one sports guy in boston and mike felger and still be so fucked i think what they need is something disruptive that i don't think either of us know what that answer is like we need a disruptive talent or a disruptive movement. 98.5 going to FM was beyond disruptive. It was Amazon coming in and eating retail's lunch. And I don't think EEI has ever recovered. And I just don't know what the answer is. And I don't think it's necessarily talent. To be Kirk is still, Kirk is still the young guy. Yes, you're right. You're like right. think about it. Like yeah. think of like, you know, he's the young guy in Boston radio or whatever this is, Boston airwaves, whatever. Like he's still the, like, you know, think about who else. He's younger than Felger. Yep. He's younger than Maz. Yep. Uh, and he's younger than Toucher and Rich. He was also the disruptive guy. By he's the also disruptive, right? He's the, he is. That is the. He's one younger example. than Greg Hill. Correct. Like so, how the he's forty six. He's almost forty. Like he's the youngest guy. Like what the fuck is going on, guys? Like okay. Boston media just will not. They're so entrenched in how they've always that puritanical attitude. Yep. I guess permeates the airwaves of Boston. It's it's awful. Do you think Kirk gets a call from Mike Thomas? Uh, I I don't. I don't know. I think he. I, I. I. would say no because he's he's a sports hub guy. So I think he's going to be more like. I think he's more of a play it safe guy. I would. I would. It would be the right move to make. I mean, what you do is you offer. If you're serious about it, you offer Kirk. I mean, everything. I mean, yes. I know he's a Boston contract. He, he's, but you, the, he's the program director, basically. You hire him and then you hire. You give him director. every and you give him yeah. money that is just ridiculous. Correct. And you. You basically. You be. You know, the Godfather. You make him think, offer I, can't refuse. I don't think now. One. I don't think he would ever want to do this. He would not be the guy to do like the Howie Car model where he's syndicating his show to his enemy, kind of. Yeah. But uh, like, so I don't ever think he'd be an employee of Odyssey again. But I kind of could see him thinking about it. Don't you think? Like, he loves the battle. He loves the fight. Like, imagine if he came back, had a lot of control, and could save the fucking station. I think it'd be wild. I, I also, crazy? He, just, he just seems like he's having fun yeah. here, though, because like, yeah. he can do whatever he wants. He knows he has... Because the thing that, you know, the thing... Oh, this, uh, by the way, this is fairy tale talk, and it's not even it's not even WEI talk. Like, I don't even give a fuck if WEI comes back from the dead. It's more about, like, can you take a station that's rated so poorly 
and put like a Kirk Minahan there and him save that station. Not W, not save WEEI, but like just save the frequency almost because they're so fucking hard because it's so irrelevant now. Yeah, I, I would just, I, that would shock me. Yeah. But like Mike Felger, like you said, going over there and then taking over afternoons there and that's how they start to rebuild. I, I think it's more real. Just It's, it's more, more realistic. realistic. For sure. Like bringing Kirk back would be the smartest play to make, but I don't, I would be shocked no, if they did that. Never. I mean, they're, 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 it's always old guy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We say go young, but I honestly, because nobody's back to the original point, because nobody's grooming anybody, there's no names. I don't know, but like go listen to other podcasts in this, of people in this area. I bet there are some 20 something kids out there doing pretty good sports podcasts that if you, you're right, if you took some time those, and ruined them. But those 20 kids are irrelevant with their podcasts now. They have no home. Right. So what you should have done is grab those 20 guys a year ago and then told Greg Hill to make fun of them for fucking 12 months straight. And then, you know what I mean? Like now they're in the ecosystem. Now they're characters. Now what? So it's, that's what I would have probably suggested, but they're not going to do that shit. They're just going to go hire Steve Peralt and put him on a mid. I mean, actually, actually, if I was Mike Thomas, you know what the first call I'd make is? I'd, I'd give Jerry Carabas the world. Yes. I would go give Jerry Carabas, you know, whatever, maybe, you know, half a million, three quarters of a million, a, a huge bump yep. a year, <laughs> yep. three year deal, four year, some, something crazy where you can't say no because his contract's up at the, what, the end of the year. That, yes. they say. Yep. I, that would be my very first call would be to Jerry Carabas and I would give him the fucking world. Well, and I then did, let's did, get some young people in here. I did see that they, uh, they just re-upped with the Red Sox. I wonder if they renegotiated that deal financially and maybe they have some capital to spend it on talent like a, you know, I don't know. We're all just speculating. Yep. In the end of the it's day, just, like, yeah, I, right. I don't mind seeing them go under and turn to fucking... Oh, no, I'd love to together. see I just get destroyed. But no, but yeah. it is kind of fun to, like, be the GM for a day and be like, what, you know, what trades or what guys would I sign or who yep. would I go get? Absolutely. All right, well, that's the wrap-up show. Chris, thanks so much for hanging out. I appreciate get, it. Get Quantum Week tickets. Uh, you can go to quantum-week.com and you can get our live show tickets. I'm, I'm going to predict those are sold out uh, by 6 p.m. tonight. Guaranteed. Oh, my gosh. I Definitely. don't know about that. I, that. I would be... I'd be very happy. And by the way, don't fucking lie. You know you'll be nervous as Kirk, if Kirk is sitting front row. I will. I just did. I just do a show with I him. I will say this. I will say this. Uh, Carano will be more nervous if Jerry is there than you being nervous if Kirk's there. I, I, I really won't. I would be. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I would be more nervous coming in here. To, I was much more nervous coming in here to the first time when I was when you weren't here, yep. or even the first time that me and you were did work together. I'll be. I was more nervous that day than I will be for the live show because the live show I have more control. Yep. And you kind of know your community. You have control, but you kind of know the community who's coming. Probably. Well, yeah, but I know what we're gonna talk about. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, this is the Kirk Minahan show. It's not my show, so sure. it's a lot more. It's a lot. Not that I'm nervous. Now I have questions now. I, uh, maybe Chris is worried about stuff now. But, yeah. Uh, but I don't. I don't. I'm not scared. No. I no. I, I really won't be. I, I'd be. I'd be honored if. My gosh, how cool is that? If my favorite podcast host comes to my show, it'd be unbelievable. Sounds like it's happening. So love it. Well, go get your tickets. Uh, like I said, you gotta get them fast because they're gonna be sold out. So all right, Chris, have a good weekend. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dave.